All right, here we go. So it is uh, March 1st. Welcome everybody to March. We're not that far away from uh, spring and, and construction season in the north half of the United States. Uh, things have been moving along uh, fairly well in some of the southern states, I'm happy to say. Um, Florida in particular has got, uh, got a, a good variety of uh, projects coming on here. All right, are you guys seeing this uh, on the screen, the presentation? Yeah. Yep. Okay, and you can, and everybody can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, all good. All right, good. Um, so let's uh, let's jump into this. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna just kind of go through a few things up front before we jump into the uh, concrete masonry etch specifically because we've had some exciting stuff. Val Kemko, some of you guys heard it on the Monday meeting that we had this earlier this week. If not, um, you, you'll hear it. You'll hear it here. Uh, but this is uh, this is the product we're talking about today: uh, the ACR concrete and masonry etch. Um, Alchemco is uh, is diversifying a little bit. Uh, we have now moved into two divisions: uh, Alchemco, which is our North American division, Canada, uh, Mexico, and the U.S., and then Alchemco International, which is the rest of the globe. Uh, I can't remember how many extra countries we're in right now. I think about 20 or so and, uh, and continuing to grow. And we do some things substantially different in different parts of the world. There are actually some materials that are available in other markets globally that are not available. So that's what, one of the reasons why we decided to uh, internally make it into a couple of different divisions. Uh, the segments that we're working on this, uh, this year, and, and most of these are carryovers, but uh, this is just a focus. And just to give you guys, again, a broader idea of, of where we play. So stadiums are, are an important focus for us. Airports, certainly. Uh, highway bridges. Uh, we did a really nice job in the last couple of years on the bridges, and we're continuing to, to move forward with that. Parking structures, of course, is a mainstay for us. Vertical applications is going to be a new focus for us as well with the uh, uh, the addition of the TechCrete 2500 systems for masonry and CMU block. And then, of course, the water tanks and water treatment plants and things. So diverse, diverse waterproofing uh, uh, overview. We're going to be staying with the five brands that we have now. So as we switch into these different divisions, uh, the global division will also have these same brands. Again, they may just have some different products within the brands. So the TechCrete, the Crete Pro, and the Bridge Deck are our spray applied uh, waterproofing technology, the subsurface membranes. Duratite is our is mainly our repair and below grade uh, products, and then ACR. Uh, which we're going to be talking about today a bit, uh, which includes the concrete edge, are our cleaning and repair uh, products, and uh, specifically uh, specifically the uh, ACR uh, concrete edge. So, very happy to announce uh, that we were voted uh, as the winner and in the innovation innovative product awards at the World of Concrete. Uh, this was our second shot at this uh, in 2020. Uh, they had what they called the most innovative product awards, and we won the uh, award for our category for TechCrete 2500. Uh, this year, we won it for the Concrete Etch, and we also won it for the Bridge Deck Waterproofing Agent, which is our uh, highway division uh, products. And the, the cool thing about it is they have two different Vote, voting methods. One is the industry. So the attendees, 50, 60,000 attendees vote. Another category, another way of uh, doing it is they have a board of experts that also vote. So for any particular material category, you can have two winners, one that's voted by the industry and one that's voted by the board of experts. And they're generally different. Uh, in the case of the in the case of the etch, we were voted by the attendees, the fifty thousand plus attendees. 
with the bridge deck, we were voted by the attendees and we were also voted by the board of experts as the most innovative product. So um, really, really excited about both of those things happening. So let's jump into the concrete etch a little bit. Uh, I would say that here's a, a quick video of the application. Simple, fast, easy, and safe really, which, which is, is a nice combination, right? Particularly the safe. Uh, we're gonna go into this a little bit more as we, as we get through this presentation, but we're competing here with other etch products, which are acid-based, hydrochloric acid, muriatic acid for etching the surface of the concrete. And that is nasty, nasty stuff to work with. It's, it's nasty for the guys to work with. There, there's just a whole bunch of things that make it an unpleasant process. This takes most of those out of play. And, and we think that's going to be uh, the biggest reason why people are going to want to use this. And we see it being much broader than just prepping the surface for waterproofing projects, right? This is going to be flooring contractors, general contractors, manufacturing plants, et cetera, any place that, that needs to be taking care of their concrete because they're going to be doing something with it. So as I said, safe and extremely easy to use. It's very effective. Uh, it's a fast application and relatively fast drying. So it's not a big, long dragged out process. It's cost effective. Uh, it is um, about 250 square feet a gallon average coverage rate. Uh, so you're, you're gonna end up with, uh, with good coverage there. It's non-hazardous, so you're able to use this indoors, which again, can be a, a problem with the fumes and stuff when you're using hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid. Uh, this has none of that. And it does not need to be neutralized, which, uh, which acids do. So it's much, there's a step that's missing there and it's a lot less messy by the time you neutralize it generally with a powder, then you're washing it off and everything. Um, we don't have to go through those steps. This is a replacement for muriatic acid. We're not trying to convince people that they should start etching their concrete. This is for people that have to etch their concrete for whatever the reason is. Again, putting new flooring down, putting a coating down, putting any number of things down. Um, and so this is a better uh, way to do it. I think another this, point to make, Peter, on this is if you're using those other acids, they will attack steel structures. If yep. you use them inside, uh, anything metal will be corrosion Perfect. right yeah yeah so you've got to your point you got that corrosion possibility and then you've also got corrosion of the steel reinforcement bar inside the concrete um so yeah that, that's an excellent point um safe to use and and really accentuate that and, and i'm going to walk a little bit this is going to be a little bit inside baseball on on some of this but one of the highest costs for contractors is their workman's comp insurance. And depending on, on what trades you're in, it can get really high. Uh, I started out in the business as a commercial roofing contractor and the, the state workman's comp insurance rate was 100%. I mean, it was, it's, it's like the second most dangerous thing, but it was 100%. So if you had $10,000 worth of labor figured, you were figuring another $10,000 uh, worth of workman's comp stuff. So that affects the every project you're bidding on, you got to build that in how many projects you get and ultimately how profitable you are is tied into that workman's comp insurance. Well, the way the workman's comp insurance is you've got an experience mod and that is a factor that goes up and down as you have reportable incidents. Reportable incidents are somebody got something in their eye and had to go to the urgent care. Or somebody burned themselves or cut themselves or fell off the roof or whatever it was. Every time you had that, your experience mod went up, which meant your insurance rates went up. And if you could limit the number of those over time, you could make those rates go down. You could control it a little bit. It took a while to do it. So being safe and avoiding that stuff was not just something you wanted to do. It really, really affected things. And, and I'll just, I'll tell you this right now, when I was a contractor, we were part of a group that really focused on stuff. We self-insured on some things we were able to get our rate down to 70%. The state, as I said, the state fund was 100%. Well, 
what that meant is if I threw $100,000 worth of labor on a project and had $100,000 worth of workman's comp I had to throw on there, in my case, because I was a 70% experience mod, I only had to throw $70,000 on top of that. That meant that if everything else was the same on my bid, I was going to be $30,000 less expensive than my competitor, which meant I'm going to get the job or I built more in and I made more profit on the job. So this is a real thing for contractors. In addition to the bidding side and just the cost side, it's the productivity, right? If you're on a job and somebody has to leave the job site to go to the hospital, the emergency room, the urgent care, it's impacting that crew's productivity for the day. Say you got a five man crew, somebody's got to go to the urgent care. Now you got a four man crew. And depending on what it is, you probably have another guy drive him there. So now you're down to a three man crew for the day. You're losing money, you're losing productivity. And if that guy's then out for a week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever the case is, now you're stealing people off of other crews and they're running shorthanded and it's just a mess. So the safety factor is a, is a big deal. And if you've got contractors that do etching as part of their business, they're going to be very attracted to this as an option. Also, uh, when it comes to experience mod, Peter, and I, a lot of people don't know this, if you have a mod and it has any number to the left of the decimal point, yeah. it has to be point something. You're prohibited to bid on thousands Certain. of jobs. Yep. They don't yep. want you. Yep. That's another good point. It really is. Uh, it's also to an extent foolproof, if you will, right? You can't apply too much product. This is not like an acid where if you don't neutralize it effectively, you put too much, it just keeps eating the concrete and eating the concrete. You see the white uh, bubbling there? That is the etch actively uh, engaging the concrete surface. And you see the rest of this where it's not white. That's because it has already done the etching and it is done. We're talking about less than a minute, probably 20, 30 seconds in most cases. And it is then inert. The etching has occurred and all you're doing is waiting for that to dry. It's going to etch the surface you know, maybe like, I don't know, a 64th of an inch, it's, it's not going to be a lot. And you're going to have a powder there left. You can wash that powder away. You can vacuum it up. You can broom it up, right? So there's no neutralizing step. And it's very simple and easy and fast to deal with. But again, there have been contractors, plenty of them that have, have ruined concrete surfaces because their guys didn't neutralize it properly or they put too much on and it just kept eating into the concrete farther and farther. So this is again, uh, foolproof, if you will, from that standpoint, you literally can't put too much on, it won't affect it. So this, uh, this product contains no natural acid. This is 100% synthetic acid. And that's why we don't have a neutralization step that's needed. So you're saving time, you're saving effort, you're saving mess because you're using this product. It's very effective as a descaling product, removing calcium and buildup of efflorescence on surfaces. That's how this actually very first got started. It's a, an effective salt remover on a wide range of surfaces. It removes accidental splashes of cement during construction processes when it, when it splashes up onto things. And here's an example. This was a deck, a residential deck that got poured and you can just see where it kind of splashed up onto the gutter and onto the siding. This is afterwards, right? It used a little etch on there. It broke, it broke everything down and, and removed it. Now, I don't want to make this sound like this is a cleaner. This is not a cleaner. This is something that reacts with cement and concrete. Just happened to be that in this case, uh, the uh, cement was what splashed up on, on the uh, surface. Okay. The extreme hydrogen load in gives this product the extra punch it needs to dissolve. Question. Go ahead. It's in the chat, Tim asked. I, I can't read the chat, guys. I'm doing the presentation. Oh, what, what's does it in the work on brick? Yes. Yeah. This is concrete and masonry etch. That's the name of the product. Yes, it does work on brick. 
Okay, so the extreme hydrogen load-in gives this product the, the punch it needs to dissolve calcium carbonate. I don't know why this keeps popping up there. Okay, uh, it's ideal for use in detailed or architectural etching. Because it's non-fuming, it can be used indoors, which is a problem for hydrochloric and muriatic acid. And just so you know, hydrochloric and muriatic acid are kind of interchangeable terms for, for the same thing. Oops, sorry about that. So uh, just using that on a small area with just a pump sprayer here. It's an easy application. Like I said, about 250 square feet uh, uh, per square foot of, of coverage, uh, per gallon of coverage. And um, you don't need a lot of special safety gear. We always recommend safety glasses and, and gloves, but uh, you don't have to gear up for this. There's nothing in it that's gonna be harmful to you. Um, some of the performance characteristics, it's non-corrosive, it's non-fuming, it's 100% biodegradable, it etches concrete, it's both OSHA and EPA compliant, 100% uh, synthetic acid, it's not regulated at all by the DOT, it removes rust, it's safe on glass and metal, it's safe on skin. I mean, if you, if you pour this on your hands, your hands are gonna get a little sticky. That's about the extent of it. So some of the classifications and approvals, we've got these in case you know the, the engineers and stuff wanna say it, but again, 100% de uh, degradable, biodegradable, all the different initials, it's not regulated by them. It's not regulated uh, to get it up into Canada. Uh, it meets these qualifications. It meets California Prop, 6, Prop 65. The FDA recognizes it as safe. The USDA, it's got these authorizations. As you get into the HMIS classification, you've probably seen some of this before, which is the hazardous materials identification systems. Blue is health hazards, right? And it goes from normal material, which is zero, up to extreme danger, which is three, or deadly, which is four. Fire hazard is red, and it, and it gives you the different combustion levels. Specific hazard is white, and then reactivity is yellow, and that goes from being zero, which is stable, up to three, which can detonate if it's in shock or in heat, or four, it just may detonate on itself. So this is what this uh, shows. We're triple zero. We're absolutely not a factor on the hazardous side at all. This is as good of a score as you can get. We're also NSF approved, which is the National Sanitation Foundation. So let's talk a little bit uh, real quick about the bad stuff, right? Here's what you're kind of competing against, hydrochloric acid, urea, sulfuric and sulfamic acids, glycolic and gluconic acid and phosphoric, right? Just to give you an idea on the right, the corrosion rate we were talking about, whether it's metal that it gets you know, splashed on that's nearby if you're using in a manufacturing plant or something, or even corroding the steel reinforcement in the concrete. The, the readings on the right are mills per year of corrosion that build up. As you can see, concrete masonry edge is 0 0.17 mils per year. Hydrochloric acid is 609, 802, 520, 402, and 173, right? Order of magnitude worse. We just don't affect the, from a corrosion standpoint. Then you've got the other bad stuff, the, the other ratings on the side, right? Your health hazards, your reactivity hazards, we're the triple zero, we're normal. Hydrochloric acid uh, going from right to left, it's a zero one three, which the three is extreme danger on the health hazard side. It's a one on the reactivity side. And then the going to the left, you've got, is this going to burn you if it gets on your skin? Is it poisonous? which is the skull and crossbones? Is it a fire hazard? And then is it just hazardous to human beings? So hydrochloric acid is all of those and an extreme danger. Urea HCL is also extreme danger on the health hazard side and has all of the other bad issues. Sulfuric and sulfamic acid is hazardous. It's a one in a two. Uh, this <laughs> glycolic and gluconic is extreme danger and violent chemical reaction. 
and phosphoric is extreme danger. So again, this is what we're competing against. This is the people that have to etch their concrete for whatever their reasons. This is what they have for options right now at least options that work. I'm, I'm sure there are some green options out there that you know do an all right job, but if you want something that's really gonna be substantial, this is what most of them are dealing with. So uh, some of the shipping things, it's got, again, it got the triple zero HMIS. Uh, it's 100% biodegradation within 10 day window. You don't need personal protective equipment. No secondary containment is needed on the project. Uh, it's not DOT regulated, so it ships common carrier. It meets the EPA requirements for direct release. It's manufactured in a green circle certified facility. So all, all the good stuff. This is how it kind of got started. This is uh, equipment. So this is a, a truck here, a concrete truck that has a bunch of stuff splattered on it. And you see it's speeded up a little bit here, but they've, they sprayed it on, they're scrubbing it with a brush and there's the result. So this, this again, this originally got created as a cleaner for uh, trucks and equipment and things like that in the concrete industry. And then started realizing that it was be able to be used as a, as a safe and, and easy uh, application for, uh, for etching. But, this is also something that uh, that uh, it can be sold for. Uh, and then lastly, this removes efflorescence from stone and masonry and concrete surfaces, right? So here's, here's a bridge uh, with brick and stone, and there's the result after the product's been used in a head-to-head -head comparison. So it's a nice, versatile, safe, fast uh, product. And not only is it in our line and has been our line, obviously we haven't put a lot of marketing and emphasis behind this. We're going to now because we're walking on top of that uh, award from the world of concrete, right? So here's the tech data sheet that uh, goes with it. And lastly, it's a versatile etch, belongs on the distributor showroom shelves, right? Whether it's the guys that are selling our waterproofing or whether again, it's uh, distributors that sell to concrete contractors, uh, to flooring, masonry, general contractors, pool contractors, any and all of that. They're all having to deal with these type of issues and they would all benefit from using these products manufacturing plants and warehouses again they're on their maintenance teams because again you can use it inside it's not going to affect the equipment the the pallet racking any of that kind of thing peter could it be used for acid washing uh, gunite pools i believe so that you know that's a good question for kirsten uh directly on that but uh i think that uh i don't see why it wouldn't be able to because yeah, I, I always used I used to own a pool service business, but um, we always used muratic, and that was you're right. You get a whiff of that shit. Ooh, yeah, it's not pleasant to work with, uh, as no. well as being dangerous. Uh, again, yeah. you've you've got the fumes and everything to uh, to deal with. And if you think about it, again, the the tone and tenor of what we do at El Chemco, it's it's unique technology. It's safe to work with all of our products. They don't have smells. You're not dealing with the fuming and things like that from the waterproofing to the prep products, et cetera. It's just the way we approach the industry. And that's what we're going to be starting to market El Chemco as, as well. Now that we've got, now have three awards uh, in two competitions uh, at the world of concrete for most innovative uh, people are going to start realizing that everything that Alchemco has is on that innovative end of things. And uh, Peter, they're, yeah, go ahead. Can uh, what is the surface profile, the ICRI surface profile that that etch will produce? I can't answer that. Kirsten can probably answer it for you. Okay. Kirsten's our, our technical director. Um, Jim, I'll get you an answer on that. Yeah, Ryan, you can get him the answer or get him Kirsten's contact to, to, to get it for him. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Absolutely. Um, so is it safe for ceramic glaze now that I'm out of uh, the presentation mode for uh, aluminum, glass, uh, skin, et cetera? Uh, so the answer is yes. Uh, it, it is safe. 
other questions or other thoughts? I mean, again, we've had this product in the line now the, the entire time, um, but we haven't really educated you guys about it. We haven't really put a lot of marketing effort behind it, uh, but that's changing now. So, Peter, uh, one other question. I, I, I'm not trying to manipulate all your time here or anything. Yeah, no, go ahead. That's if, what we're doing you, this. If you use multiple applications, does it produce a deeper edge? Yes. And, yeah. and in some cases, you're going to need to do multiple applications. Okay. So I, I know the reaction time is really quick. Yep. So yeah. um, yep. what is the reapply time? Do you know? Uh, I do not. I've been not been told that there is a, a waiting period for it. Based on them cleaning the equipment there, I don't think there is a waiting time. Okay. You spray it, get rid of it, and spray it again. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. So the basic difference in the cleaner and the, and the etch, the cleaner, the grease, that type of thing, oils. Yeah, the, 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 our, our cleaner is designed to be used with pressure washing, right? It's, a, it's just a, a general organic uh, detergent, if you will. This is, this is a synthetic acid. Um, yeah. And in some cases, you're going to be using both. And in some cases, you might, again, with the emulsifying cleaner, right, to get the deep oil and grease and everything out. That's one of the reasons why we've got all of those products. <laughs> Peter, the, uh, I know when you do uh, like uh, the um, hydrochloric and that, it smells like rotten eggs. What's the smell for our product when you're... It's virtually none. Okay. Virtually none. So when you're going to do multiple tests, you're talking like a real tight uh, burnished, say, concrete. And then you're going to put your first one on and then you're going to look at a water dissipation test to yeah. see yeah. Yeah, if you've opened it. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's the basic reason for doing this, right. Is to make sure we've got open pores in the, in the clean concrete to, to uh, have our pr products be able to penetrate. What other questions? Okay. And other questions, I appreciate your guys' time. And, uh, you know, please, please get behind this. This is, you know, this is a door opener. The thing I love about our products is they're all so unique that once you get people using them and they like using them, the natural question is, what else do you guys have? Right? I mean, when you find a manufacturer that has something that works, you kind of go, okay, you got, can you help me with this? Can you help me with this? It's just, a, I think, a really good lead in uh, to uh, a whole wide range of uh, opportunities. So with that, I'm going to uh, sign off on this. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, good luck with this. Thanks, Pete. Thank yep. you, Peter. You bet.